Good afternoon. This is Brian Shannon from Alpha Trends Blogspot. It's Tuesday, September 19th, 2006, and the market has just closed. So I've got the NASDAQ 100 trust up on the screen here, looking at a 10 minute time frame. And over the last couple of days, I've been a little bit cautious, thinking that uh, the market got a little extended from last week's rally, and it was starting to show signs of some distribution, or rather indecision, with these moving averages crisscrossing. And once we broke below these lows, that's when it turned to, you know, we could then in hindsight say, yes, in fact, it was distribution, because now we've got a downtrend going here. So the market broke down a little bit here today, below the $40 level, below this recent support, and that also also puts it below the five-day moving average. Uh, we did see a little bit of a bounce here this afternoon. Now I think that the market's really going to have to get back up above the $40 level before I really feel comfortable about holding on to stocks on the long side for very long in here. The market continues to send a very mixed picture. As you know, I've been focusing on this weekly time frame because we've got this uh, important level that the market is is near you know at 40 to 40 50 you could you could say you know maybe forty dollars and thirty cents would take the midpoint somewhere in there um, that's based on that prior level of support also this Fibonacci uh, retracement level and the the declining 200 day moving average and we have to stay focused on these bigger uh, levels of prior support um, and in case in point today was uh, Yahoo Yahoo uh, had been in a downtrend it broke down hard. It rallied up to multi-year level of uh, prior support. Here we're looking at Yahoo on a weekly time frame now. And you can see how this prior level of support was acting as resistance. Then on the daily time frame, when we drill down in here, you know, it's it shouldn't be a surprise to see more bad news following the direction of the trend. The direction of the trend is lower in Yahoo. And again, I'm going to point to the declining 50-day moving average as evidence of that. We see the declining 50-day moving average in uh, eBay. And a lot of these stocks that are, you know, that have experienced bounces but are in primary downtrends on the weekly time frame. Now, the cues going back to that, it's tough to say it's in a primary downtrend, but we've got, a, again, a lot of mixed messages here that are coming from the market. On the daily time frame, I still think we look like we're in a, a nice bull market here. We've got the 10-day moving average above the 20, above the 50. They're all advancing. The weekly tells us uh, that we're in a very critical area, so we ha we can't uh, put all of our weight on this daily time frame. And then the 10-minute time frame says, looks like the sellers took back control a little bit here today. So it broke below that range that we'd been looking at that the market was in. And now it puts the buyers back on the defensive. Now, hopefully, maybe tomorrow, the Fed will say something that excites people. And uh, today turns out to be a shakeout, a little bit of nervousness before the Fed. Most people weren't expecting, uh, you know, most people were expecting a dull sideways trading day today. And I had said yesterday that I was looking for probably a surprise move. I wasn't sure what direction, but it became pretty qu uh, apparent what direction that was going to come in once we broke through these support levels, not just on the Qs, but obviously in the Spider as well, the SPY. Yesterday, we were looking at the range, uh, this range, and the S&Ps made it back up into that range. So again, more of a mixed picture. And I was looking at 131.65 as the support level to be broken where we would have to get more defensive. The market pushed nicely higher up through that. However, it found resistance at that five-day moving average, so still sending us mixed messages. Now, if we get a big breakout to new highs tomorrow, I think it's going to make good headlines, but I don't think it's going to make good purchases. So I remain very cautious in this environment. The semiconductors, they broke down didn't experience quite as much of a bounce as the rest of the markets. And the daily time frame still looks good, but we're also at that critical juncture here of this declining 200-day moving average on the semiconductors, as well as you know, on this on this bigger picture, 50% from the year uh, high. But going back to the... Um, the April highs, the two-thirds retracement. So what do you want to look at? Do you want to look at a 61.8% retracement? Or do you want to look at and say it's retraced 50% of this move, and maybe it can get back up to 36? There's a there's a possibility of either one right here. But as long as this 200-day 200, 200 moving average is declining, that makes me a little bit more cautious in here, uh, in particular when we get these short-term breakdowns like we have here. I think the area that makes me most nervous is the uh, mid-cap stocks, the MDY. And they, these these guys were breaking down pretty hard today, um, but were, they, 
but did manage to uh, recover fairly nicely, um, you know, compared to, to how far they had been down. But we were looking at this uh, trend line here in the daily time frame that when we back that up to a weekly time frame, we can see that, you know, these mid cap stocks, the MDY, Broke below that, this, you know, this trend line, this trend line's been acting as resistance. A lot of times that'll happen, you know, creating kind of a bearish flag. But if it breaks below the, these, this trend line in here, I think it's going to spell very big trouble for the overall market. And the IWM, the Russell 2000, yesterday, again, we were looking on the 10-minute time frame at a similar range. And the, you know, the, the IWM managed to make it back up through there. So I continue to say that the risks are high in this uh, area of the market right now. Mixed messages, what the market's sending to us, and we've got to just go slow and be careful in here because, uh, you know, the action is so quick um, with these moves in here that it really favors uh, day trading, in particular when you have a big event uh, occurring the next day like we do with the Fed tomorrow. CCBL was a stock I had mentioned as a p uh, potential candidate to look forward to, uh, to some strength today. Uh, I had suggested that uh, if you're... Um, I wasn't going to give specific uh, stops, but, you know, the stock did make a lower low here today. And when the market was caving in, I think it would have been prudent to probably take that, in particular when it was below the five-day moving average. But the stock did follow up nicely. Now, if you're in this stock, I would probably say that, uh, y you know, you would probably want to move your stop to break even. That's what I would probably do here. LIFC, here's a great example why I'm a short-term trader rather than investor. This stock got pretty nutty today. Here's something I was looking at yesterday. I thought maybe it was a little extended in the short term and should pull back, so it, it gapped higher today. Whether you traded it or not was up to you. But the stock made this massive rally from about 31.10 or so up to 33 uh, and change. And then it just caved right back in. So if you were in this stock, hopefully you, you were smart enough to, to, to raise your stop, put a trailing stop on it or something like that. But if you're still in it after a big move like this, I, th you know, I think it just brings up the from failed moves come fast moves. And this looks like a failed breakout to me. And, you know, with big volume without further upside progress equals distribution. So I think that today... Um, you know, was a uh, a difficult day to trade this LIFC. You had to be very quick in it, obviously. I had mentioned a couple of uh, these smaller stocks that had earnings recently and, and a very nice response to them, one of them being RFIL. And RFIL, uh, looking at the daily time frame, uh, you can see in here what I was looking for was I thought maybe uh, I was a, a day early or so, and I, I still think that was probably the case. Looking at a five-minute time frame, though, you can see that we're starting to see these moving averages crisscrossing. This green longer-term moving average starting to flatten out. It looks like there's a little bit of resistance above, just a little bit above $8. That's probably where I would buy the stock, above $8, but, you know, what you decide to do is up to you. And, um, you know, if I did purchase it, I probably wouldn't be, risking definitely anything more than that as far as where my stop ought to, uh, ought to go. Um, Angeon was another one of these small stocks that I had uh, said that it looks like it's early, but I was looking for a, a pullback, a, a continued pullback. That is a little bit deeper pullback in this stock. And what I was looking for was a retracement of about 61.8%, which would get us down near this area, and also for it to f maybe find support near that rising 10-day moving average. So I was thinking that maybe uh, it would pull back towards about $6.50 and that you would want to look for some stabilization before buying it. The, the low in there today was about 660, uh, I think it was 666 actually. Um, let's take a look, yeah, 666. Um, so anyways, the, the stock pulled back to $6.66. This longer term moving average is still declining. I think you'll probably get a chance to see it settle in back towards 7 again tomorrow. And then maybe on uh, you know tomorrow afternoon or Thursday, this stock becomes a good candidate for purchase. Um, there was an opportunity to trade it on the long side today. And if you had done so, I would be uh, probably taking some profits um, because this longer-term moving average and the five-day moving average are uh, both heading lower. So 
uh, just be careful with that one. And let's see, what else did we have? We had a couple shorts we were looking at, ARXT, and this is Adams uh, Respiratory Therapeutics. I had been saying that I thought that uh, the stock still looked vulnerable, and on a daily time frame it does, but it left this long tail today telling me that basically in this long tail meaning that uh, the difference between the open and the close really weren't that strong, but during the day it traded much lower. So there was a very small difference between the day's open and close, but the distance between the close and the uh, low it shows that the buyers were able to push the stock back up during the course of the day. Obviously, we can see that a lot more clearly here on a five-minute time frame. Uh, you know, intraday time frames are going to be much clearer to see. Now, I had said that I, I was looking to sell the stock short um, below some weakness, which I, you know, was, was saying basically that, you know, look at the definition of the uptrend here on the short-term time frame. We had, uh, we had these a little series of higher highs yesterday and higher lows. So I was saying, hey, well, what invalidates that uptrend is breaking below and making a lower low. So um, I did trade this stock. I did trade it profitably. I think that, you know, you're looking at this certainly tells that, you know, when the rest of the market was rallying, that they clearly right there, the buyers had regained control for today's session. And I'm not sure I really like this one so much in the immediate term future as, as a potential short. But uh, I, I think we'll be revisiting that one again as uh, on the short side. Foster Wheeler was another stock that I had mentioned as a potential short sale candidate. Seeing here this big, bigger looking top here on the weekly time frame with this prior support becoming resistance right in here. And then the daily time frame, uh, you know, where we could see that occurring as well. Now, on the 10-minute time frame, we, we had a nice little move. And what I was looking for here was kind of the same type of entry as, as the last stock, which was when the stock made a lower low. I did get short this stock and ended up covering it, uh, most of it down near uh, daily S2, which let me just uh, uh, show those, show the pivot lines. And that's right, you know, right here. I had, uh, you know, gotten a nice trade, figured it made for a good cover right in there. If you're still short this stock, look at the big volume that came in at the end of the day as the buyers uh, started taking back control. I think that tells me right here that I would be very nervous with a short position right in here. You know, the buyers came in pretty aggressively here late in the day. Um, it hasn't broken this little downtrend line, but that's just from two days. But it did make it back up to that uh, S2, and uh, I would be quick to cover this one right here. Um, looks like it, it, you know, has the potential to move higher in the short term. And again, I want to mention, you know, the feedback that I got from yesterday was that, uh, um, you know, it's too bad that that happens. That you know that that uh, you know people send these types of emails, and that uh, one bad apple can ruin it for the bunch. Um, I'm going to work on a couple ideas as far as maybe bringing back some price points, uh, maybe getting a, a beefier disclaimer, put something in the middle of the video. I don't know, but um, I do appreciate the feedback. Thank you, and um, I'll be back this evening with another video uh, with more ideas for tomorrow. So thanks for your time.